general message, uh, I would say, is probably a little, little too radical for most people to accept. Keto has been around for a couple of years. So people understand, you know, you cut sugar, you know, that's good for you. And I think that's, that's a good segue into, you know, doing something like a full carnivore diet. I mean, the whole concept of eating meat is not really uh, strange to people. Because here, I, I guess people, they just came straight from the farm. And then, so I think people still have a very strong belief that meat is healthy. Eating meat, but eating it all the time and only meat, that's something, it takes a little time to uh, communicate. Uh, George, well, it's good to see you. Give me just a moment here. Uh, I need to uh, hey, change, sure. change the view here real quick. And welcome. You are, and I just heard you said you're in China, which is which is pretty neat. Um, we don't have yeah. a lot of, you, you would be our first coach from China, our first guest from China. <laughs> I believe. Um, yeah, there we go. Now we got you back on the screen. Anyway, well, welcome. It is an unusual time. Normally we do this at 9 a.m., but obviously with the time zone difference, that's very impractical for where you are. So we are kind of afternoon where I'm at, which is fine by us. Um, so, George, what part of China, China are you? And, I, and, I, and forgive me, I have very little regional knowledge on the different sectors of China, but where, where are you located? Sure. Well, uh, thanks for doing it at uh, this, this this hour. Um, it's actually 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, same as Perth. I'm in Chengdu, China. And uh, Chengdu is in the western part of uh, China, so it uh, borders Tibet, and it's a uh, second year city in uh, in China. It's got a registered population of about twenty million, but it's actually more like twenty six, twenty seven million. You know, so it's, there's a lot of people here. That that is you know that's something that's amazing because you know I think the, I want to say the biggest city I've ever been to I think maybe London which is about ten million and you know that's just like a small city in China you know you've got these massive <laughs> twenty five thirty million million people cities around there which is so so amazing with with how many folks here well tell me uh, well I guess I guess this is kind of a success story type of deal so tell us a little bit about your background if you don't mind yeah sure sure um, well first of all I I grew up in uh, uh, Queens, New York. So that explains the New York accent every now and then. Um, I uh, did my uh, 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 training at uh, Berkeley. I did engineering. And then after that, I went into corporate for about uh, right after university. And about uh, uh, age 30, I decided to go into business for myself. So uh, I've always had an interest in uh, fitness and nutrition. So I got into that uh, into that industry. Um, I started out, uh, uh, in a food, doing a food business and, uh, that some, uh, well, some of the businesses that I started actually didn't work out because, you know, I was a new entrepreneur, but, um, some of them actually lasted. So, uh, I've been pretty much on off. I've been doing food business for the last 20 years since age of 30. So I'm 30, I'm 51 right now. And uh, oh, and uh, I moved to uh, Asia uh, during my you know corporate uh, years, and I've, I've lived in the UK, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, and I've I've worked in uh, uh, Taipei and Beijing and Shanghai and uh, now Chengdu. I was looking. I was looking up Chengdu on the map, so I know where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm trying to find it on, on the world map there, and I said, I've got where you're located. So, um, so you know, obviously, you said you grew up in in, in Queens, or you said Queens or Brooklyn. I can't remember one of the two. Queens, Queens. Okay, and you know, spent all the time there. You went back. How long have you been back in Asia then? Uh, well, pretty much right after university. Uh, so about 22. So I've been here for like close to. 30 years. 30 years. Okay. Well, tell me about, you know, you said you into health and fitness. You're all, as of, as of I've been, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit older. I'm 56 or 56 in, in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, two months. Um, you know, how has that impacted, you know, your, I mean, you're in the food business. So what kind of food were you doing? I mean, was it, was it, was it stuff that we're going to get mad about that you're all this junk food that you're, <laughs> you might, yeah, you <laughs> might. Um, well, uh, Pretty much, uh, for the most part, I worked with um, schools and fitness clubs, so they were relatively healthy. 
but uh, on my own, I've also done fast food businesses. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, hamburgers, fries, and, and even, uh, fast food, local, uh, fast food, Chinese food, which is, which is not that great. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, the business that I've worked with, uh, sorry, I was going to say by definition, the fast foods are never particularly good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, for a lot of the time I, I've worked with, uh, like, uh, fitness clubs. So, um, I did a lot of the, uh, low fat, um, high protein kind of meals for a very long time. I'm probably about like 15 years. I've, I've done that. And, uh, that's how I got into, um, nutrition. And that's how I got into eventually studying more about nutrition and eventually finding, uh, you on YouTube. And after I read my, uh, after I read your book, I pretty much, you know, I, I, I changed, uh, well, the first time I, I, I saw you on YouTube, you know, I thought you were like, kind of, uh, I thought you were like kind of crazy because mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think I saw a video of you <laughs> eating like two dozen eggs and <laughs> like three pounds of meat, you know, and, and I've seen some like crazy people like at, at the, at the gym, you know, they'll eat all kinds of stuff just to get big, but. No, I thought you were like pretty crazy. So, um, uh, but uh, the after reading the book and then after following you for the last two years, a lot of it made sense. Well, I mean, to be fair, I thought I was crazy too. I mean, you know, if I look, you know, if I if I found a rolled back the clock ten years and watched me five years later, I said, "What are you doing? You're crazy." Uh, that's totally, you know, understandable. You you know the the low fat high protein diet is very common in the fitness community. I mean, and a lot of people get good results, so they get lean with that. There's no doubt it, it works for for that particular outcome. So, what was it that dissuaded you? I mean, other than watching videos, was there something going on where you just weren't happy with that particular nutritional approach? Yeah, um, I pretty much followed that uh, train of thought. You know, for pretty much uh, most of my you know. Uh, career that I was doing the you know, food business and working with the fitness clubs. Um, but I, at around age 46 or 47, even though I had been relatively uh, healthy, relatively meaning like I still work out and stuff, I still play sports. But uh, I think, George, I think we lost you a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm back. Um, yeah. At about Age uh, 46, 47, my, my body started falling apart. Um, I had uh, started a new project. Uh, this is in uh, Beijing at the time. And um, I was, uh, I was, I had a cough which lasted uh, about half a year. And uh, at the same time, uh, I noticed that all the things I was doing was no longer working. Uh, even though I work out, I uh, wasn't able to recover. And, uh, just, you know, just, I had all kind of, all kinds of little issues like skin lesions and, uh, um, uh, intestinal disorders and all these things just, um, to me, it didn't feel right because it wasn't something that, uh, I felt was, was, uh, was, uh, healthy. So at that time I decided to do a deep dive into um nutrition and so i started taking a couple of these uh, nutrition uh courses um and uh but i was still working at the time so it was still kind of like uh you know i i, I get a little info here but then i gotta go to work and stuff like that but um in the end of 2018 uh that's when the pandemic hit and uh for, for our business, it was pretty much uh, completely like shut down for a while. So uh, it was actually a blessing in disguise because um, it allowed me to really, really just go into, uh, you know, into nutrition. And and uh, I realized that a lot of the info that I had picked up was probably wrong, you know, and that's, that's when I made the switch first initially to uh, keto and then uh, eventually to like a carnivore type of, uh, diet. And, and I'm just curious because, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of, I've been, to, I've been to the airport in China. I've never really spent much time there. So I don't, I don't know a lot about what's available, how it's perceived over there. I know pork is quite popular in China. It's probably the number one meat served over there. You know, it's number one eat, 
meat eaten in the world on a whole. But how did that go? I mean, how do you how do you make it? How do you do a, China, a, a carnivore diet in China? Is it? I mean, I a lot of I, I tend to do a lot of beef here. I mean, that's what's available in the U.S. Is it mostly pork, or how do you do it where you're at? Well, I'm in Western China, so. Um if if you uh, if you know something about Chengdu, it's actually famous for hot pot. Uh, so hot pot is where you, you take like uh, bits of meat uh, and vegetables and you kind of put it in a stew. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone eats hot pot here. Everyone. There's really no exception. And the thing about um, uh, hot pot is the the, the main dish in hot pot is uh, feinio which is like a fatty cut of beef. All right, so that's like a pretty much a requirement for hot. <laughs> so everyone kind of gets uh, uh, the idea of eating meat. It's not, it's not an issue here in uh, Chengdu. But um, uh, I think just, just eating meat is something else. That's something that's kind of a, something that you have to explain. Yeah, it's well. I mean, because I, I know, and I don't. I don't know where the beef in China is coming from. Whether it's Brazil or India. India's got a huge herd. Maybe in, you know they're not far away uh, to where they. And I know they export quite a bit of their their their, their food. Um, and it's in the fatty meat is interesting. I'll add this. You know, one observation is kind of interesting. If we go back to like the, the way back evolutionarily, you know, you see a lot of Eastern Asians, Chinese, and and, and the rest of folks in Eastern Asia have a lot of Neanderthal DNA more than. The average person and the, the Neanderthal were very much carnivorous, and I just wonder if some of that, you know, some of that is, is you know, as you know, when they when they migrated across and Homo sapiens intermixed with the Neanderthal and uh, the the, uh, the other different uh, human species that were around, uh, Denisovians and whatnot, uh, if there's an impact on that, because I mean. Yeah, I, I don't. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's not a big strong push for veganism in China right now. Is there? Is that? Is that like? Is there any real, real, realistic, big push for veganism there, or, or no? I I think that uh, agenda has has really hit the average Chinese uh, person. I, I know when I was working in Beijing and Shanghai, there were uh, you know some people that were uh, I guess a little more progressive, you know, so they they followed that. But uh, pretty much, I I don't think um, that's it's not it's not here on the map yet. <laughs> you know, it hasn't made its way here yet. Um, regarding you know uh, where where the meat comes from, a lot of the good beef in China comes from Inner Mongolia. So it's actually um, you know there's Outer Mongolia, which is uh, an independent country, but then there's a Inner Mongolia, which is part of China. So most of the beef comes from. Uh, in Mongolia and um, uh, lamb, which is also a big thing, uh, that comes from Xinjiang, which is uh, which is also like west, northwest. Interesting. If I ever get to China, I hope I get to one day to visit. I'll have to. I'll have to go. <laughs> maybe stay on the western side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've. By the way, I've been to Xinjiang uh, like three times and. Uh, uh, I'm, I, I really love lamb, so they have uh, they 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 will uh, slaughter fresh lamb and and give it as a as a that's like a standard uh, you know lamb dish in uh, Xinjiang. This is in this is Inner Mongolia or where is that? Uh, no, no, this is Xinjiang. Xinjiang. It's another province. Okay, uh, that's well known for lamb, and then Inner Mongolia is well known for its beef. Got it. Okay, interesting. In China, um, so. So you decide I'm going to, you know, I watch this crazy guy on YouTube for some reason, decide uh, I'm going to do this. <laughs> no, I had no idea why, but what, what happened? I mean, how did it go? I mean, what, what did you notice? Yeah, I, I, um, so <clears throat> I tried doing that. Uh, cause here's this, you know, here's this guy, he's like 55, right. And then he's doing breaking world records and that's all I got. I got to try this. You know, that's like a typical gym mentality. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I got sick because I, you know, I couldn't handle all of that uh, meat in one sitting. And then, uh, but I gradually, uh, increased the amount of, uh, meat that I was eating and, um, uh, fast forward, like, you know, yesterday I had, uh, you know, a dozen eggs for breakfast and I had, uh, two and a half pounds of meat, you know, after my workout. But, uh, I, I think part of the, the issue is that you have to actually do a, a workout like 
you know, for lack of a better term, you have to do like a Sean Baker workout before you actually eat the three, two and a half pounds of meat. Yeah. You know, otherwise, otherwise it's, 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 it's too hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's superfluous if you just eat a bunch of meat and you're not putting it to work. I mean, I think they're, you know, I think, I think most people, I don't know what you're, how big you are, how much you weigh, but you know, like I said, if I'm, if I'm working really, really hard, then my appetite goes up and then I eat more, you know, for me, two and a half pounds is actually a weight loss diet for me. You know, that what you would describe is actually me losing weight. So I've got to eat more to, to maintain the weight, believe it or not, but I'm a, I'm quite a big person. Um, when you, uh, you know, as far as, like I said, you, you, you said, there's no problem finding meat. There's hot pots everywhere. You just say, Hey, hold, uh, whatever vegetables you're going to stick in there. So you just kind of, and, and I've been to some restaurants where it's kind of like that, where you just kind of, you kind of ch choose what you put in the hot pot. You just kind of drop your meat or whatever you want in there and you, Get it? Is that how that works over there? You just kind of put what you want in there, and then you just only put in meat or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just um, um, you. Well, here's the thing: if you if you have it in its traditional form, the hot pot is really really healthy because um, it's actually the stew is actually uh, beef uh, tallow, so it's it's actually beef fat. Oh wow! You know, and then you stick like a fatty cut of meat. Uh, so the, the fatty cut of beef I'm referring to is actually, it's a similar to like a pork belly, but you know, mm. on a cow. So it's, it's got all that fat and then you usually dip it in a sauce. Uh, and then you usually, um, well, you have it with all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, foods and a lot of it is uh, intestines too. There's also, uh, you know, like cow's brain and, uh, you know, hearts and livers. So these are really like fairly new, nutrient dense foods. Uh, I think the problem is that um, I think it's like the same as uh, in the U.S. Because you know, when I was growing up, I still remember uh, McDonald's. You know, they used to fry their uh, you know do the uh, French fries in uh, tallow, right? And those were like the best fries. I mean, everyone knew you go to McDonald's for the fries. But, you know, over time, I guess, uh, you know, they try to save costs and then you try to uh, make it more profitable. So they kind of flip the, uh, you know, the soybean oil and canola oil into the um, into the uh, fried foods. So I think the same thing is probably happening, uh, but not so much because, uh, you know, the, the taste of uh, beef fat is still like, you know, it's kind of uh, irresistible. So it's good for business to have, you know. Uh, the original form. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that sounds, you know, if, if that's the way it comes, that sounds great to try, you know, great to try it out there. I guess, you know, I'll put that on my to-do list. If I ever get out, get out that way, try a traditional Chinese hot pot with it cooked in the actual beef fat. That sounds wonderful. Um, so when you, you know, you said you first, you were eating too much. You, got, you didn't feel too good about that because you couldn't process it all. What, I mean, I mean, have you noticed any improvements, you know, from, from two years ago to now, is, is there any differences in your quality of life? Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, this is, uh, it's like miraculous because, um, well, first of all, it did take a little time. So I was actually stuck in the keto world for, uh, so it was my fourth year going into keto and like my second year uh, going into like full carnivore. Uh, the only plant food I have pretty much is uh, coffee. Um, but right now I'm, I'm able to do a, uh, a uh, Sean Baker like workout, for lack of a better term, it's a functional training, but with you know you do a number on your CNS, so you're like tired, you know, and you got the uh, and pretty much I can recover on a daily basis, which is something I I was never able to do before. I mean, even uh, when I was in my twenties or thirties, I mean, I, I take a day off or something, but uh, now I can go like every day, and for me, that's kind of a good gauge of uh, how. And how I'm doing, you know, whether or not I can recover on a daily basis, you know, with these type of workouts. And uh, so I do the uh, functional training workout uh, in the morning. And then usually in the evening, I'll have some sort of activity as well. As I, I know you do MMA, uh, I also do like some basketball and, uh, you know, I play ultimate frisbee. <laughs> so I do that a couple of times a week as well. And the amazing thing is I'm actually able to recover on a, on a daily basis, which is uh, just, it's mind boggling because, you know, in the past, I'd always have to take a few days off, you know, after like Frisbee or basketball. And, 
you know, a hard workout. Yeah, that, that, that is one of the uniquely interesting things that I found that, that I was, even though I was training very hard, whereas before it might take me three or four days to recover, I literally can go in the next day and do the same thing, which I thought was quite, quite interesting. So I think the recovery, maybe you're doing less damage perhaps, and, and you have better tools to recover with from a nutrition standpoint. Does anybody, I mean, how, I mean, are you, cons- are you considered a, an oddity among your peers there? Do people think, this is, you know, George is a crazy guy or what, 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 how is that being received? Are you, are you actually converting people into trying this or what's going on over there? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think uh, right now it's still limited. Uh, the general message, uh, I would say, is probably a little, little too uh, radical for most people to accept. But um, keto has been around for a couple of years. So people understand, you know, you cut sugar, you know, that's good for you. Um, and I think that's, that's a good segue into, you know, doing something like a full carnivore diet. I mean, the whole concept of eating meat is not, is not really uh, strange to people. I mean, we're, I, I think we missed the whole, um, uh, I guess the whole, uh, you know, plant kind of agenda kind of thing so because here i i guess people they just came straight from the farm and then uh the cities just kind of uh uh advanced really quickly so i think people still have uh a, a very strong belief that meat is healthy you know so uh eating meat but eating it all the time and only meat that's something you know, it, it takes a little time to uh communicate yeah that's that's an interesting thing culturally because in the united states for the last Gosh, at least 50 years, we've been told that meat, particularly red meat, is bad for us and it's unhealthy. So everybody um, has had that that sort of, I think, misconception. And so people that just eat meat are considered unhealthy. And they often have, they often just say, well, I'm unhealthy. I'm going to eat all these other, other unhealthy things. Whereas my understanding, this is why some of the epidemiology is very different when we look at some of the Asian countries, is that the meat eaters, it, it's not associated with a lot of health negative outcomes. And so it's, it's quite, quite in often cases, the opposite. And if, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, uh, meeting is, meeting is considered, you know, having the ability to eat a lot of meat is considered good over there. Is that, is that correct? Or am I incorrect in that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. You can't have, uh, you, you can't host a dinner without, you know, like a good piece of meat. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like like in the old days. I think you know, like in, in aristocratic, you know, Europe. I, I was I, I remember reading that if you serve somebody just vegetables, it was considered insulting <laughs> to to them. You know, yeah. it's kind of like an insult. Hey, where's the food? So they must they must not like you. So it's 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 very interesting when you have a different perspective in there. And you know, because we usually associate meat with fast food and junk food, and in many cases, you know, just a poor quality diet. Whereas over there, again, it sounds like it's considered you know a, a healthy part of the diet and. Do you, I mean, what is, uh, I mean, you're in, you're obviously in a big city, you said 25 to 30 million people. Um, a lot of times we're seeing a city that, uh, uh, you just see a lot of people getting sicker and sicker because they're, maybe they're not doing, maybe they're not out like in the farming communities, the rural communities where you're working a lot. Are you seeing obesity and diabetes becoming a problem, uh, in, in, in Chengdu where you're, where you're at? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I think, uh, the more cosmopolitan the, the city is, the more issues there are, because um, uh, I, I think it's the lifestyle um, of, you know, the, I mean, there's a lot of pressure uh, to, I mean, if you live in a first tier city like Beijing or Shanghai, even a second tier city like uh, Chengdu, the, uh, uh, you're pretty much busy all day long. You know, uh, your average person here, uh, let's say my generation or slightly younger, um, they're raising their kids, they have their fat, they have their mom and dad. So they're, they're kind of, they have pressure from both sides, you know, <laughs> a lot of financial obligations. So pretty much the lifestyle is, uh, something I think that is, uh, causing people to have lots of issues. So when you're busy, you don't have time to prepare your food, you buy whatever's available. A lot of it's processed food and it's, 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 uh, it's very nutrient, uh, deficient. Uh, and then there's, uh, in, in my circle, which is, let's say, let's say small business owners, uh, just an interesting fact, um, the average lifespan of a Chinese business owner is about 50 years old. Wow. That's, that's how bad their lifestyle is. You know, it's, it's a lot of drinking. It's a lot of entertaining. Uh, it's a lot of, uh, you know, nine snacks, um, very little sleep, lots of pressure. 
So this is, um, I think, an area that uh, probably uh, needs, I, I, and a part of it is, I, I think the problem is it's a lot of bad info. You know, it's, it's not just cultural, it's bad info. Um, I think if people could just, um, you know, uh, focus more on, uh, you know, less processed foods, having more meat because they're nutrient uh, nutrient dense, you know, so, and then eating less of the uh, sugar and carbohydrate. I think that would stop a lot of problems. Um, diabetics, for instance, uh, uh, you know, the, the absolute number of diabetics here has actually surpassed the U.S. already. Yeah. Yeah. Although on a percentage basis, it's, it's probably, you know, less. Yeah, we're at, I think we're 9% of our population, so around 30 million diabetics, and you've got a population of 1.4 billion, so obviously... Yeah even 5% of the population would be well above us. So I, don't, I don't know what the number is, but um, do you, I mean, do you see a, a, a market for the carnivore diet where you're at? I mean, do you see a lot of, you see a lot of potential? And and if so, um, how, how, like, I mean, is, is anybody around you, I know you said you do some coaching. Have you been able to impact a few people with this so far? Um, I have a success uh, story that I recently, I helped a, a friend of mine. Uh, he's actually 57 years old. He started out uh, five foot six, 166 centimeters, but he was, he was 130 pounds. So he's, he's certainly overweight. Um, sleep issues, circu uh, circulatory issues in hands and feet, probably neuropathy. He had some gout uh, and he was just, you know, kind of uh, obese. You know, and um, just uh, with him, I didn't. I didn't suggest going the the, the keto route. Um, uh, I just I just went you know straight on carnivore, and uh, and he's he's pretty much he had some transition issues, but um, he pretty much dropped about fifteen kilos, about thirty three pounds, in three months, and. He sleeps like a baby now. I mean, he just, uh, it's, and it's typical, right? I mean, I think most of us that follow this diet, when the sun goes down, it's like a sleep spell, you know, it's like cast iron. And then, and then you wake up, you know, when it's, when the sun comes up. So I think it's um, something, and he's been trying to resolve his sleep issue for a very long time. Um, and now uh, he's able to, you know, exercise, uh, which is, he wasn't able to do that before. Um, and uh, he just generally feels a lot better uh, and, you know, down 15 kilos. I mean, that's bound to have uh, health benefits just in itself. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and is he still sticking with it? Has he been pretty surprised? Yeah. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really, uh, but I think part of the issue is, um, I think the, uh, you said for potential marketing, I, I would say that a lot of it is uh, communication. I think perhaps, uh, you know, communicating the idea uh, would be, I think it might be more presentable if it's uh, presented in a more like a um, Chinese, you know, kind of like, or a, like Chinese medicine kind sure. of uh, um, mindset. Right. And uh, Chinese medicine is, uh, it's about, you know, like homeostasis, like yin yang, you know, that, that kind of thing. And the, I have, uh, the first time I picked up you know, when I came back, I picked up a Chinese uh, medicine book. You know, I, I thought I thought it was probably a little uh, archaic, right? But then recently, I picked it up again, and you know, having studied you know, nutrition these these past few years, I said, "Oh, okay. Well, the terms may be ar archaic, but um, it's actually a lot about uh, balance." You know, so I think a lot of the um, pathways that you know we study now uh, in in nutrition. I mean, it's. Uh, uh, that you, you kind of strive for homeostasis, which is which is what Chinese medicine is all about, and uh, so that's why I noticed that when I was when I started um, coaching some some people, I, I noticed that they would always bring up, you know, I, I, I you know I feel cold, you know, or I feel you know heaty, you know, these kind of things uh, can be explained uh, as part of a you know a system, a homeostasis, a, a balance. <laughs> Yeah, it's and I you know agree. Obviously, there has to be a culturally appropriate <laughs> translation for people to make sense. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think you know, but I think at the end of the you know, 
it, it, it's I, in many cases very intuitive for people because you know you you like you said you've always eaten this. I mean, certainly just to remove the new stuff, the, the, the new stuff that's made its way in. I'm sure some of the folks that have been some of the older generations are probably are like, well, this what this didn't exist 20 years ago, and now everybody's eating it. And look, look how look how you know obese our children are becoming, or something like that. That's got to be clear to clear to people there. Um, do you, I mean, how, uh, how affordable is, is meat in general in China? I guess obviously it's going to vary by region, but is it, is it pretty easy for the average person to, to eat? Would, would it, would a yeah, be? Yeah, it, it is actually, it is, uh, China's uh, known for its supply, you know, supply chain, you know, so I think when, um, with the Taobao's and, the now there's a Ping Duo Duo and the Jing Dong, and these are kind of like Amazon type of companies in China. So they really take care of the supply uh, chain issue. So I heard something from, you know, uh, this this company in uh, Inner Mongolia that sells beef and, you know, they'll ship it out to me like at a very reasonable cost. Um, I, I guess I could uh, do like, uh, I might order a beef brisket for, let's say it's uh, five kilos for about, Let's say 200 RMB. So 200 RMB divided by seven, which is exchange rate. So about twenty dollars, twenty eight US dollars for one kilo of wait wait twenty two hundred uh, divided by five forty times. Well, anyway, I, I I figured it out before, and it was uh, very affordable. It was probably like um, three or four dollars uh, per pound. Yeah. Okay. For that's for, for beef, that's, beef brisket. Yeah, that's that's pretty similar to what you can find in the grocery stores here. I think you know I see like a choice yeah. brisket for about four bucks a pound typically here. So that's not bad. Now again, it depends on what the average salary in China is versus the U.S. And I guess it depends on where you live and what you do, I suppose. But still, that's that's. You know, I think that's, you know, if I were visiting, then I could certainly, certainly afford it. Whereas you go to like a place like Norway, where everything's like six times the price or something, <laughs> it's tough. Uh, um, do you, uh, you know, as far as, you know, I mean, I don't know, do you see a physician regularly or is that something that, that you need to do typically? And, and if so, do they, are they, I'm sure they're not, are the, are the, are the physicians there, are they worried about cholesterol? Is that something that you guys talk about a lot, you know, in the, in the community? I know. Um, uh, the last few physicals I've done, uh, each time I get flagged for the cholesterol thing. Cause I, you know, I have high, I have, uh, relatively high cholesterol. Um, I, you know, have my triglycerides are really low, you know, so, um, but they don't notice the, you know, the, the, the low triglycerides, mm. they just notice the high total cholesterol. So, um, I mean, they, they just tell me all the time, maybe you should, talk to a, uh, you know, a, a heart specialist or something like that. Um, yeah, I actually uh, don't know of many, um, you know, carnivore doctors or even, it, even like keto doctors. Um, I think, uh, I think you have uh, a, a doctor uh, based out of Hong Kong, I think that was, um, uh, I think low carb based. And I, I think I, tr I tried to reach out to him uh, through, through, through you, but um, it was, the issue. Um, I actually uh, consulted with a Hong Kong guy, and and he uh, uh, he wanted to do a um, physical, and I wanted to refer him to a low carb doctor because that I mean that's the first thing that's going to come up, and then you got to explain you know the the cholesterol, and then you know how you know it's not really an issue. I mean it's a it's a it's an issue, but it's not as as serious as uh, you know the the hospital would have you uh, believe. Yeah, we have to put it in context. There's nuance in context that, that maybe more information you might need to do before making decisions. Have you been? I was going to ask you, curious. Have you been to Mongolia? Have you been up to Mongolia? Uh, no, I've not been to uh, Inner Mongolia. Just uh, Xinjiang. I go to Xinjiang uh, quite regularly. I think it's uh, you know for for vacation holiday. Okay, and then and and how about Hong Kong? Have you been to Hong Kong? Oh yeah, yeah. I lived in Hong Kong for uh, for. Uh, three, three years. <laughs> okay. And, and one of the things that, you know, we've, I've seen a lot of articles written about is, you know, the, the, the meat consumption is Hong Kong is quite high. Is that, is that fair to say? I mean, do you see, are people eating a lot of meat? In Hong yeah, Kong? I mean, 
Yeah, I think in uh, yeah Chinese dishes, um, uh, it, it, I, I would say that uh, it's it's probably pretty diverse throughout China, but it's pretty important to have a piece of meat, you know, as, as part of your meal. If you have a piece of meat, that's uh, it's not really like considered a, <laughs> a meal. Yeah, I I I wholeheartedly endorse that thought. <laughs> In fact, you know, I'm not sure if it's a meal if it's got much of anything else in there. But uh, anyway, um, what have you? I mean, other you said there was some difficulty transitioning the first time. Have you had any downsides? Like you said, you're you're, you're engaged in different sports, weightlifting. You're doing you're doing uh, uh, different different. I think you said ultimate frisbee or something like that. Any any negatives? Are you worried about? Uh, do you do 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 you worry about electrolytes or anything like that? <laughs> Uh, the first time, uh, you know, it took, well, the transition took a long time. So it took a couple of years, you know. So during that time, I was uh, still experimenting with, uh, you know, uh, physical activity and, and the low carb and keto at the same time. Um, what I noticed was that uh, um, the, you don't have as much uh, energy initially. Uh, and I think that's more of uh, your ability to um, replenish glycogen, uh, glycogen stores. So uh, on those, you know, when you're running really fast, I think that initially will uh, take a hit. But uh, eventually, as your body gets used to using fat as, um, as a way to replenish uh, muscle glycogen more efficiently, then, you know, all that, that speed, that power comes back. So um, I, I think it, it, it takes different people, um, you know, different different time. For me, it took a while, maybe because I'm, you know, older. Um, I, I know that a friend of mine, Adam. Uh, I mean, he's he's in his thirties. Um, he uh, he just switched to carnivore, and, and his transition was very very quick with pretty much no 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 side effects. Um, I, electrolytes, I think, were something I didn't understand initially, but now I do. I think it's good in the transition because your body's still getting used to, uh, you know, the new type of foods, and and I think it hasn't, you know, fully adjusted. But after a while, yeah, I still take some um, uh, electrolytes every now and then. Uh, I think more for a taste now because you know they they come in these, um, you know, pretty tasty kind of, you know, not it's not, no sh it's non Oh, it's a sweetened, not no sugar, but it's yeah. still tastes pretty good. I think I don't know. Really, I don't think I really need it. How do you? Um, although I do uh, salt my foods. Um, are you focusing on a really, really high fat approach, or are you more protein dominant? I know you said you eat, you know, a dozen eggs and two and a half pounds of meat, and you you mentioned there's a lot of fatty beef in the hot pots. But what is? Have you ever got any thought of how much protein you're eating, how much fat you're eating relatively, or do you know, or do you bother to track? Yeah, I. Um, well, it's it's a, it's about um, one point. I I, uh, I go between one and one point two kilos, so up to two and a half pounds of meat. Mm -hmm. um, I would say by 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 size is about thirty percent um, fat. So it's it's a fairly high fat um, okay. kind of you know carnivore version. But I I find that um, you know I I I'm originally uh, low fat you know high protein, mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing that for like, you know, 20 years. So, uh, I know what that feels like. I don't think that's, uh, I think it's really good if you want to get super lean for a while, you know, but, but without the fat, uh, you just, you, you don't feel, you don't feel very good. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the whole dieting process and the high protein, it just doesn't, uh, right. Const constantly hungry. Yeah. It's, not that's, that's, it's hard to deal with for sure. And so, and so when you say 30% of the meat just visibly, then that's going to be calorically, it's going to be you know, because fat is double, you know, nine to four, basically pro yeah. carbs to f fat to protein yeah. ratio. So it's yeah. probably 70% or higher fat, something like that. It's very yeah. similar to what my diet is. It's, it's typically about 60 to 70% fat somewhere in that range is typically where I hang out. And I feel pretty good on that. Um, do you, uh, I mean, you have, I, you didn't mention, fat. do you have family with you, George? Are you, do you have a family that you live with or? Uh, well, I'm, I'm single, but um, actually my family is originally from, uh, you know, Chengdu. Okay. My mom's from Chengdu and my, my dad's from uh, Chongqing. So I do have, you know, family here. And are they like, what the heck? <laughs> are they, are they, what are they? What, I, try, what, I try. Yeah. I mean, are they, are they like giving you a hard time uh, for, for, 
No, no, no. I mean, uh, the, about uh, the, the diet. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I always bring it up uh, during family, you know, reunions and stuff. Um, uh, I think part of it sinks through. I think it just takes time. Have you met any other, I mean, other than the people you directly influenced, you know, I guess the guy you said that lost, you know, 15 kilos or whatnot. Uh, are there any other carnivores hanging out in China that that, that you know of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're actually, I mean, we have a group of people here in Chengdu. Uh, so I, I, I have like a WeChat group where there are a lot of like a keto because that's where I was before I got in car. So I started that group. Um, we have about uh, 80 people and um, some of those have accepted more, uh, you know, of a carnivore kind of, you know, lifestyle. So yeah, we're, we're planning uh, to have more, uh, Meetups and then yeah, meetup like M E A T meetup. So we're planning to have one uh, actually next week. So yeah, there are there's a it's a group. Uh, I mean, it's work in progress. So I mean, I guess we could unofficially say that uh, Chengdu is the capital of China for carnivore right now, unless somebody else wants to claim that title. Is that, is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can say that. Interesting. We'll make it the unofficial carnivore chap capital of China. So very good. Um, is there, uh, let's see, have you, um, you know, you've mentioned your training. Have you been able to get stronger doing this diet? Have, have you noticed you said you've been working out more? Is it, you've noticed any change in strength? That's what I'm saying. This is like absolutely amazing. Cause uh, I'm making these, first of all, I'm working out every day and it's, uh, you know, it's squats, deadlifts, bench, uh, you know, I got the hex bar. And so these are like, for me, it's real, it's heavy. Um, and I'm making micro gains like every, you know, week or two. It's like it goes up another, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe like a few kg, you know, so that's the, I, and, and right now I'm, when I was in college, you know, I did some lifting. So I, I, I worked up to a little bit of poundage, but, um, I lost it during all those years I was working and now I'm just getting it back. I'm just like reaching what I was lifting back in college. Yeah. And I'm and I'm like, you know, making these small incremental improvement, which is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, I try I, to explain to people, and then people just say like, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't maybe, get maybe it. it's genetics or something. They don't but, get. It. I mean, it's, it's it's remarkable that you're you know you're you're approaching or surpassing what you did in college in in your fifties, which I think most people would be thrilled about. And it doesn't doesn't make sense because you don't see that. That's not the typical progression. Most people, you know, you kind of peak in your twenties and thirties and then it's all downhill progressively until you, you know, until one day you just stop moving. So good for you. That's, that's awesome. And, uh, it's, it, it, you know, I'm just amazed at how, you know, how, how far this has spread across the world. Now, I mean, I had somebody from the other day in Botswana and, you know, China, and we've got just all over the planet. So that's, that's really neat to see. Um, do you have any advice for anybody? I mean, uh, I don't know how many people from China are going to be watching this, maybe a couple, who knows, uh, that, that maybe you're thinking about it, you know, in, in that part of the world or anything like that. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think for a lot of people, they, they'll, they'll follow the info and maybe they'll read a few books and, um, but, but there's like a mental, uh, kind of like obstacle of of uh you know not eating vegetables for a while and for that i might and it, it takes a while because i actually you know read your book you know a few years ago but i didn't actually make the full switch until maybe like a you know a year later um so i think a lot of it is uh you know mental but if you want to get around that why not just try carnivore for let's say a month or two you know, just to, just to see how it goes. And then, and then you can decide for yourself whether or not, you know, it's for you. Yeah, I guess that's fair enough. Where, I mean, do you, uh, do you maintain a social media presence? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know what, like I said, I, I, I don't know. I, what I don't, I don't, I don't, I, uh, not yet. I, uh, I, uh, am, I guess I'm, so because, uh, well, I guess I'm kind of new to this, uh, you know, full-time coaching plus influencer kind of thing. So I started doing a, uh, a little channel in China, but still work in progress. But I'm a coach on your platform, so you can always look for me there. Perfect, perfect. Well, George, this has been really enlightening and fascinating. I'm so glad to get to talk to you. And so hopefully maybe we'll just kind of touch back, you know, in a few, you know, few months, six months down the road, see how things are progressing sure. in China. You're you are you are of course sort of our liaison to China right now, as far as I know. So 
Uh, it's fun to fun to hear. And awesome. I, like I said, I think there's so much potential because you know, as you see what's coming to China, what's coming to India, you know, what's coming to the rest of the world, we've exported. One of the awful things we export from the United States is our crappy diet, and it's just going across the world. And maybe having some insight before the hurricane gets there, you can you can stop that and say, "Hey, look, before let's not go down that path," yeah. and you can avoid a lot of needless suffering and you know all that stuff. So, thank you so much, George, for for being there, and for the few people that are here this afternoon. Thanks, guys. I'll be back again tomorrow with another success story. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor Baker. Thank you for all you're doing. Your oh, my pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye, bye, everybody. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Okay. Hey, folks. It's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.